Beckman Unleashed Podcast 30. Here we go. I got a lot. We got a lot planned for you guys today. We are live. We're live. Here's what we're going to do. I am going to go through a way of thinking and some behavioral principles that I truly believe you can eliminate 90% of unwanted behaviors. And I believe 99% of the general public and probably 70% to 80% of dog trainers have never thought in this way. And I'm going to present it to you here in one second. We're also going to go through a viral video of Bear, the original purring Rottweiler, which many people have asked me to review. I'm going to talk about what I think about these videos. This is Rottweiler that growls at his owner. And we're going to get into that and then comments and we have voicemail and other stuff. We're not going to waste anyone's time today? Of course not. We never waste your time. We do an hour and a half podcast, but that's okay. That's okay. You can click off if, yeah, if, if, it's, like it. if you feel like it's wasting Kick your rocks. time. All right. Let's bring up the slide. You this didn't... is called the punishment reinforcement continuum. All right. Eric thinks that word's boring. So he wants me to go crazy and try to be super exciting. But we've got the slide up for you right now. Please. I want you, if, if your dog does anything you don't like, I want you to pay attention. And all of you have stuff that you, that your dog does that you, that you don't like. Please look at this. All right. Please understand this. And can you explain it to the folks that are driving and, in their car that are listening through oh, Apple? Thank you. And Eric, you're going to be the normal guy who tries to poke holes in this. Okay. Who doesn't understand anything. So like be myself. Yeah. yeah just be okay. yourself. Perfect. So on the screen is a line in the middle of that line is a dividing neutral, point. a dividing point. Thank you. Is neutral. This line a continuum essentially goes on forever. Okay. With reinforcement being going one way and punishment going the other way. What the does reinforcement mean? It means in this case, this is basically reinforcement and punishment in consequence in the consequence you give. So an e collar turned up to a hundred is pretty far down this punishment line, right? If the dog is super sensitive and all dogs are generally sensitive to pain, it's pretty far down there. Where would affection be on this line? You see that neutrals in the middle to a dog who never gets petted and loves its owner. It's actually pretty far down the reinforcement part, okay? To a dog who the owner pets them all the time or they don't like the owner petting them, it could be on the punishment side. Your petting is actually a punishment. And to another dog, your petting would be highly reinforcing. I have a layman question already. Yeah, go ahead. So there can be positive and negative reinforcement. Absolutely. Now, is e-collar turned to 100 ever reinforcing to a dog? No. It so, just, it just, now the e-collar can be reinforcing to a dog. It means excitement, but the actual hitting of the e-collar is, and listen, I'm not anti e-collar. I'm just giving you the facts here, right? You come to this podcast for facts and no nonsenseness. <laughs> You can Every be in love with the e-collar, but you, 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 we pretty much all understand the dog, is. the dog doesn't want that e-collar to be hit. So he's going to avoid it being hit. That's why e-collars work. So Jenna, whatever. Under some of the buzzing things might not be as bad, right? It's just a yeah. little light touch one. Great right? point, Eric. I've been learning the, from Garrett Wing and uh, the American buzzing of the, of the e-collar could be just barely on the other side of neutral on the punishing side. I am saying all this because you have to understand it to get to where we're going to get with this, which is eliminating, understanding this so you can eliminate any behavior, but you have to understand this. Now, what was your layman question? So can you give me an example of a positive reinforcement example? And then also of a negative, a starving dog who uh, you give treats to they super to reinforcing. Well, but any, it goes down the reinforcing way, the hungrier they are, but any re any reward would generally be reinforcing. Generally. Yes. Okay. And then what's negative reinforcement? Again, I think we talked about this on a prior podcast. Negative reinforcement. Okay. I don't want to get into, this isn't to get into the four legs of Skinner operant conditioning. I could do it all day. I love it. I just don't know if you guys love it. And maybe I don't care. Maybe I just want to go into things I love. So what do you say? Negative reinforcement? So what is an example of that? Negative reinforcement would be to take away something punishing. Okay. Okay. The Neg removing of punishment. The removal of punishment. The problem with the negatives and the positives, which I didn't totally want to get into here, is the application of them. To give some, to give a shock or to give a treat is quite easy. To remove something bad 
the application of it becomes much more complicated. It muddies the waters. But so a negative reinforcement would be removing of the punishment, right? Yes. Hence, hence the shot caller, zzz, the minute you let go is negative reinforcement. So then essentially this is always logically correct, right? Because if you're applying punishment on the right side, as you remove that punishment, you're sliding down to the other side. To the... Or it's, 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 it's going away. But that is a negative form of negative reinforcement, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Are you okay? You don't have the negatives. Okay. Let's not get into the negatives. Okay. I can explain it all to you. Okay. But for this, the negatives are not as important. Okay. 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 Take it away. Take it away. The, but the, I like the questions. All right. Because I want you to keep asking a bunch of questions. Now, there's one other aspect. This is the the consequences that are applied. Are they are they positive, which will increase behaviors, or are they Excuse me, are they reinforcing, which will increase behaviors, or are they punishing, which will decrease behaviors? Now, the first thing you have to do, I'm going to do counter surfing. Okay. It's a small problem, but it is a problem. And I can apply this to every single behavior. All right. Counter surfing. The dog just getting up on the counter and smelling a steak is reinforcing. They didn't get a snake steak, they smelled a steak, they saw a steak. And they potentially, by seeing it and smelling it, they thought in their head, I might get it. You think I might get it as reinforcing? Absolutely. Coupled with the smell of steak. So it probably sits, depending on how hungry your dog is, it sits on the reinforcing side. So the dog does the behavior. The behavior is then reinforced at some level. Okay. So let's say it sits, as you're looking at this screen right now, an inch away from neutral, which is, you know, not right near neutral, but is down a little ways. You want the behavior of counter surfing to go away. And this is the whole point. I brought this up for you. And then I can go to any other behavior. You want the, 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 the behavior of getting up on the counter go away. It's an inch away from neutral on the reinforcing side. You want it to go away quick. You make it just more than an inch away on the punishing side. Why? The consequence. Because Why we not? know, we know, we know where the, the, the reinforcement is the, where it sits on this continuum. It sits down over here. You want it to go away in one to two corrections, punishments. You're going to jump to the other side and you're going to go beyond that. But you have to know where it sits on that thing. I have a question now. Yes. So I'm not saying I would do this. So don't go ahead. Save all this stuff. But imagine what if I think the most efficient way to remove the negative behavior is rather than going an inch from the punishment, I just get the sledgehammer out and just start smash yeah. every unwanted behavior so, I smash. So you're 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 as far down the punishment continuum as you can possibly on go. Everything. You're 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 on an you're on the other end of this line, which goes yeah. on forever. It's horrible. It's the worst yeah. thing ever. Well, you're gonna get rid of the behavior. You're also going to do all this other damage. have a neurotic dog. You're too. gonna destroy your dog. Okay. So we have a call to make, right? He just said the most extreme thing you could possibly say, right? For he did it for a reason. But what if we hit the e-collar at 100? It's not as far as a sledgehammer. And they make the tool to, to go to 100. It's still probably too far. Why? Because do we really care about counter surfing enough that we need to eliminate it right now? No, we don't. Now, if your dog is eating the packages with cellophane and he's ingesting it all and then he grabs it and then... You have an autistic child that then tries to take it from him and your child can get bit in the face for it. Okay, these are situations that need to be accounted for. Your dog could choke on the cellophane and die. Your dog could bite your autistic child and your child could be injured for the rest of their life. Now we can go down the line of punishment a little bit more because the behavior of simply grabbing a stake is actually more dangerous to multiple people. So I'm fine with going down there. Am I fine for a sledgehammer? No, no one is. Am I fine for e collar turned up? Maybe I am. Even though you don't use them. Even though I don't use them. You get what I'm saying here, guys? So am I worked in, up enough about my continuum? I like the continuum, but here's what you I'm thinking. Should. Obviously, you should. Because obviously you should. It relates a lot to everything parenting. Every, everything. You're going to have to do, so you're going to have to, in order to be good at this, you're going to have to per, like, Me? you have to display great judgment. Yes. Right. Because you have to understand. And understanding. You have to rank things, you right? You have to rank things. Okay. Is is your child coming home with um, a B plus 
you know, you don't hit the, the punishment at 10, right? It depends. Or a thousand. Maybe you do. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> don't. Kids get B pluses all the time. But versus getting in a gang fight, right? It's probably higher on that list. So you always have to be constantly analyzing things, thinking what level of punishment. So and can we, we didn't define punishment. Did punishment we? means anything dog doesn't like. Actually, thanks for asking. You guys want to get crazy with this? We got any behaviorists out there? We have any, any Harvard level behaviorists? Listen up. Okay. Punishment and reinforcement in operant terms actually does not mean like and dislike. The definition of it in operant, in Skinner terms, means does the behavior increase or decrease? Okay. So you can't really argue it because it's a direct result, like a measurable result. It's a measurable result. Now, yeah. we and me, for the podcast purposes yeah. and whatnot, I kind of like, well, if they like it, then the behavior is probably going to go up, which yeah. is generally true. We but think we think spanking, right? Or something when we think punishment, right? We think uh, maybe tough re uh, leash corrections or other like physical interventions to, you know, we think of punishment as that, right? We do. But it, it but that's not necessarily the case with Skinner. It, it's not necessarily, does the behavior go up? Then but does behavior go down? Then punishment was, 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 was applied. If the behavior doesn't go down, actual punishment doesn't apply. Or I would argue my whole point of this is the behavior trumps the punishment. Hence, punishment was not actually doled out. There could be some confusion too, right? If you yeah. start- The brain starts to get all weird. You have, okay, you have this, it becomes like a lottery effect, right? Where you have this chance of hitting, getting jackpotted with a stake versus a minor correction. And now it's like, Gra eh, I still want to keep going after the stake. So you're- your your level of punishment is not sufficient to grasshopper. I trained you well. Am I doing good? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm gonna be so a dog you trainer. just Watch brought out. up the the concept of variable reinforcement schedules, otherwise known as jackpotting to a degree, and that is the hitting the thing on the whatever that thing's called. Uh, I, don't, I don't gamble that slot that machine. thing. So so that's a whole nother thing. Which can which was the dog counter surfing argument? Counter surf is actually tough because the dog gets a stake one in 10 times. You actually put the, you didn't put it on, but the behavior of counter surfing is on a variable schedule of reinforcement, which actually resist, which, which um, um, makes the behavior more resistant to extinction. Okay. So yeah. the, the dog, if he only gets a stake one in 10 times, if, if the dog goes up there and gets a stake every time, then you apply the punishment or the dog just simply doesn't get a stake every time. The behavior will go away quicker than if the dog gets a stake one in 10 times because the dog goes, I have to try. I only get it one in 10 times. I could give you examples with people too. I have to get up there a hundred times. They, they found with that before I get the stake. Well, they think it's one in 10, but actually it's, they're going to try longer is all I'm trying to say. I've okay. got a layman question again. Go ahead. Okay. So one time my biology teacher said that the drive to mate within dogs yes. is so uh, intense yes. that they can often people. like jump over a fence and like essentially hang themselves in the process of well. trying to get to the neighbor's dog, you know, and there's, well, they hung themselves because they jumped the fence. Yeah. They didn't try. They didn't. But they no, were going to hang for, themselves. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess that fair point, fair point. Yeah. But you see my point of that. Yes. They were willing to go. And Humans they, too. They'll, yeah, no doubt. And they'll they'll also fight with one another to get for sure rights as well. So my my question around um, the punishment, it really comes into a question that the pod had asked about uh, Prince and saying like, doesn't Prince go after all of these females at the facility? And to we hump never, them? Yeah, well, we never asked him because he's obviously intact. Yeah. So the question is, wouldn't wouldn't uh, these engagements with Prince be like jackpotting at like a thousand for him? So yes. like, how do you stop that behavior, or do you even stop it? Okay. Or is Prince fathering Prince, a bunch Prince, of children? We don't. Or uh, Prince is a different puppies. We don't know about Prince is a different story. Okay. okay. Why? Because because me saying knock it off is more uh, uh, punishing than. Um, humping a female is reinforcing. But you're that's, that. That's you're that important, yes. to Prince. <laughs> I am, and it's not because of punishment or e collars or anything. Uh, my, I'm, 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 I'm God to Prince. 
I didn't plan it this way. But not to dog training, just to prints. To prints. Okay. Did I say dog training? No, I was just throwing that in there. <laughs> uh, to print. I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Prince looks at me. Prince, the cats, he loves the cats. Uh, Prince, if I go, if I talk to Prince when he's playing with the cats, he's like, oh, my daddy's talking to me. Like, it's just the way it is. I, I We don't need to get there's into a, that. Okay. But there's a level of... Um, yes. So, okay. So, but in general... Um, pick a behavior you want me to break down with this. I did well, counter-surfing. That was kind of the one I wanted to break down with. Oh, okay. Because it seems like the hardest one, right? Let's go. Um, the sexual drive is high. Okay, a normal dog sexual drive. Um, yeah, non-prince. Um, I mean, it, the, 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 there's a difference between jumping a fence for the sexual drive and being mounted on a female sexual drive and stopping those um, because the, the reinforcement, there's more distance. Jumping the fence is is a long ways off from the final reinforcement of humping a female in the middle of humping a female that would be hard to stop a dog from doing it or it with it could with be a hard. verbal correction with a verbal correction exactly or all right let's let's we're off topic we're <laughs> in <laughs> we're in humping of dogs um yeah, we are talking Eric about dogs was fascinated humans, with so you know the humping aspect of this whole deal all right, but let's Inquiring get a common, a, common uh, a problem. What do you want? Common problem: jumping, aggression. Yeah. Well, uh, let me let me think. Okay. Um, get, what do you want to get? What do people want to get rid of? I want to get rid of something. I have an idea because I've seen okay. it a lot. Go ahead. When we go on walks, our neighbors have dogs, and the dogs literally lose their mind barking at and the lunging. other dogs. Yeah, and lunging, and basically aggressively. Right. Leash reactivity. Okay. Leash reactivity. Take it away. All right. Release reactivity. One, I, I there's other things to this: getting your dog exercise, getting your dog socialized. Those are sort of big picture different stuff. This is operant, all right? Google operant conditioning. This is operant that I'm talking about. This has nothing to do with classical conditioning, which is a whole different thing. So oper operantly, what you're talking about, you have to look at the reinforcement they're getting from freaking out on the leash. What do they get? What's the reinforcement they're getting? Their brain is getting worked up because you. Many people's dogs have a super boring life and they go on one walk a day and they run around their boring backyard and they chew on their boring thing and their dog's boring. So them getting worked up on a leash is getting them going the same way you go work out and you feel good afterwards, right? You're like, whoa, that was weird. I should work out more. That was pretty cool. Now we it's don't like always work out. Teenagers more, but... going out to party on a Friday night. Whatever. Exactly. You get we're looking at videos. You get all worked up, right? My kids watching YouTube, right? They get it. Oh, it, it does something to their brain. You get all worked up. It's inherently reinforcing. Can I read the The definition? other thing is possibly, hold on, possibly if they want that dog to go away from barking and lunging, oftentimes the dog will go away. Dog will change direction. How about lunging at a person on a leash at a restaurant? The dog goes, I just want to stay with my dad. So they're getting reinforced for the behavior. They're also getting energy out. You don't exercise your dog enough. Well, barking and lunging, they're getting this fast twitch energy out. They're getting reinforced from it. So where does that reinforcement lie? That's your call to make. Okay. I would say for barking and lunging, maybe, oh, here's the other one. Big one. You occasionally, let's say they want to play with dogs and they bark and lunge. Happens all the time. You occasionally let your dog pull and play with another dog. Why the hell wouldn't they pull next time? And then they start to bark because they feel frustrated. So your dog actually doesn't hate dogs, but he barks and lunges. And you reinforce it because they get to the dog. So there's all this reinforcement. So you have to apply a punishment that is equal way over here. The problem with leash reactivity is leash corrections don't do it. Why are prong collars big and e-collars big? They can take that point and they can go way over there. Mm -hmm. Now, my method of leash walking isn't all that operant. My method is an early on tamp down process in an undistracted environment, that's my doorway method and my turning method, which doesn't happen once your dog freaks out. It is my opinion with my training, you have lost by the time, time your dog freaks out for the most part, it's right? Too late. You have a lot of work to do early. That I do not believe is the opinion of e-collar e trainers where they have the tool that can take that punishment. They can actually override that reinforcement much easier than my method of leash walking or leash reactivity can. They have the tool. I don't have the tool. I don't have the prong. I don't have the e-collar. My met because I don't want to use them. My method is a different method. You don't need to use them. I don't need to go jump over to the to the opposite side and trump the reinforcement 
I, I don't have the ability to do that, really. So the punishment, so imagine they wanted, they're pulling that leash and they want to do something and they're doing it right now. So now they're being reinforced. There's no punishment. Because there's essentially no punishment. But what if I were to not correct the dog, okay. but I were to pull the dog backward yes. away, yes. right? And then walk the other he way. starts to come back and yeah. I pull him back and he starts doing this over and over. He's not being punished in the sense of like physically punished. It doesn't work. But it, you're removing what he wants. I know. What did I say? about remove about the removal aspect of operant conditioning. What did I say this five minutes ago about, right? about the negatives? They're ambiguous. It muddies the waters. You're, you're talking about now the negatives, the negative punishment, negative reinforcement. The problem, it's, 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 it's not clear enough. No, it might not be clear enough, but it would still be defined as punishment probably. If you're removing, Barely. but if you're removing what it wants to do. I know. But you're taking it away from the playground. I know. But right. it's a dog. I know. You're, you, where's the moment of understanding from the dog in this slow pull away? So the lack of clarity, clarity, the lack of is the problem messaging to the in dog. the negatives, right? If you don't message it quick enough and in the right touch, That's it doesn't right. know what's happening. That's right. It just thinks you're moving for a different reason. There needs to be a moment, right? Counter surfing. I I got into counter surf. I didn't jump into what to do. I just it's got the thinking around it. You clap, which is the marker. Then you apply the punishment, which is possibly a grab or a walk into them. But there needs to be a marker. Why, are, why is clicker training good? Because you mark the correct behavior, then you reinforce that behavior. You give yourself time. My punishment marker is a clap, then an approach. And I never clap without the approach early on. I clap, I approach, I grab. That is the punishment, but I have to mark it. There needs to be this moment of, 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 of marking of, of something that, that something is coming. The reinforcement's coming or the punishment's coming. Hmm. So operant conditioning, sometimes referred to as instrumental conditioning, is okay. a method of learning that uses rewards and punishment to modify That's behavior. It. That's a basic, a good one. Through operant conditioning, behavior that is rewarded is likely to be repeated and behavior that is punished will rarely occur. I have a question. Yeah. So we talked about, or I talked I about this spanking, stuff. right? Uh, and now we're not saying spanking good, spanking bad. We're not saying spank your dog. We're not saying spank your child. What, what I'm asking is from a punishment standpoint, Yep. it seems to me that spanking checks a lot of boxes on the punishment as far as you're saying, sending that signal, sending that, yep, that what clarity, right? I mean, it's it's okay. hard to. It's punishing, generally speaking. Yeah, I mean, yes. it, and it's fast. Or it can it's be. It's not fast. that fast. It can be fast. I guess it depends. Back problem in my is, day, I, it was fast. Problem is, it's it's generally done with anger, which is the wrong way to spank your child. True. It's 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 okay. The other problem is, you have all this rigmarole until this punishment happens. So you're, you're like grabbing them. You're going into the room. You're, you got all this stupid stuff. My spanking then were faster when I got spanked as a kid. I never like got spanked. Dad, grab my, mo back. my mom would take out the wooden spoon and she'd be like, and she never used it, but she would threaten. She could be listening she'd to this threaten. podcast just so you know. No, she's definitely listening to this podcast. Okay. And she threatened me. She spanked me once in a mall. And I still remember to this day. I remember where I was in Are the you, mall. Were you horrified? Were you embarrassed? I, I think so. I remember where it was. It was at the um, the Eugene Mall, whatever the heck that thing's called. Anyway, and I still bring it up to her that, to this day, and she still feels bad about it. Can I? She shouldn't. Can I ask you what I mean? Abstract question about this continuum. Yes. Okay. So, what about? Have you heard that like teenage girls often can be kind of vicious with each other with the gossiping and yes. this type of stuff? I've definitely heard this. Are there? Is there stuff that goes on within like maybe not necessarily humans, but just these um, would be non-physical like corrections, right? Like I, I guess even like somebody saying, don't talk about that. Or it's like snuffing somebody could be considered like a way, a social way of like punishing somebody for bringing up a topic. Well, shadow banning. I don't know. Whatever. Um, I, I'll go to your female thing. Um, as soon as someone figures this out, they're going to um, make a lot of money. Because this is not being figured out in society right now. This high school girl, middle school girl thing that's go that's going on and probably has always gone on. Mm -hmm. It 
thing, by the way, this is operant. I've said it many times. What you're talking about, we're talking, that's different. This, there are things that are deep within people and animals that, that are not operant, that cannot be fixed operantly. That is classical conditioning. And that is other things. This is a small part of behavior. I'm bringing it up because it's a behavior you need to understand in order to reduce these behaviors. But you get into something as deep within middle school aged girls doing certain things. You go out of the realm of this. Can and people explain, need to understand that. Can you explain ca classical conditioning? I brought up a, a definition. I still oh don't my understand God. what they're saying. Oh my what's, the, what's the layman okay. pitch of uh, what is uh, classical uh, uh, conditioning? Um, um, <clears throat> automatic responses. <clears throat> God, I haven't looked at it. I'm not going to look at it. Okay. It would be, it would be more feelings based, more emotions based, more automatic response based. You grew up in a house. You walk back into that house 20 years later, that house still has the same smell. Mm -hmm. You are flooded with happiness or you are flooded with sadness. That is sort of a classical condition, a powerful classical conditioning example, I would say. A couple of the definitions the definition? look like uh, classical conditioning involves forming an association between two stimuli resulting in a learned response. Uh, there are basic phases of this process, but yeah, I think yeah. but it was, it sounds like it's a lot of stimulus and like the pairing of things. It's the pairing. Okay. It's, it's the, the pairing of things, but, but there's automatic responses. The op operant class operant conditioning is, is about, um, the, they choose to do the, they choose to do or not do the behavior based on punishments so and reinforcements. Like, this is classical conditioning like conscious is not versus choices. unconscious. Skinner, excuse me, um, Pavlov, Russian scientist, there's a reason he did salivation, salivate, salivation, salivation in dogs. It's an automatic response to food. Mm. The, he did not, it, you have to do with automatic responses. So when you, I classical conditioning, I don't think this, I know this classical conditioning trumps operant conditioning every single day. It's way more important. It's way more important. You understand it. But, it's but deeper, operant conditioning, right? it's and deeper harder to understand and harder to get and mm -hmm. harder to change emotional response, change, change a dog to not salivate over food chain instead of walking in your house that you grew up in that makes you sad, automatically become happy. Now, if I wanted to change someone's response, I would then continue to bring them into the house that they grew up in and I would give them um, a cake and then they'd come in again. I'd give them another cake and they come in again. That smell of the house would instantly become a, ha they would become happy due to their association with cake. It would trump their association with growing up. So and the, how many times do I need to do that? Maybe a hundred, maybe two. I don't know. So the interesting thing about maybe the force free, because I hear them say this sometimes is like classical conditioning where um, the dog might be doing something for a certain reason. I think you would say, we don't care why it wants to bite somebody. We are where we are today and we only have so many tools. I can't, I don't know or even care why he wants to bite his mom. I do I, care why. I mean, you might care, right? No, I get what you're saying. Here's the thing. There's two things wrong. Yes, I sometimes don't care why. Two, there are many people who are actually just simply off about why they want to bite that person. So, But many, you can't ca classically condition a dog in a short period of time, can you? You, 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 you can you can, if they don't really want to bite somebody, they just kind of want to bite somebody. So you want to get into classical conditioning. I love it. I'm going to go, I'm going to go off, bro. This is the greatest thing in the world. It me. will be the greatest podcast or the worst one. Yeah. They're either into it or they're not into yeah, it. That's fine. You can I'm, into it. I'm into it more than anything. Listen, this is, this is, I'm doing what even the talkers, the people who talk about training and never show you training, they can't do this. They can't do this. They can't do 5% of what I'm going to say today. They don't, they don't have the, the knowledge of what I'm going to say. And yet I'm still showing you dog training videos based on all this knowledge. Yep. I would love to make money talking about training. You can tell I can do it all day. It's the greatest thing ever. It's right up your alley. All right. So you just, okay. So, all right. A dog is a little nervous of people when, when you approach 
the dog growls or maybe lunges, but it's not this intense hatred to bite somebody. Okay. And you, this could be on any, anywhere on the, it actually applies to this a little bit, right? They get reinforced for the person leaving. Okay. If I walk up to a dog growling at me and I do this all the time and it goes against operant conditioning, it goes against sort of the elements of this continuum. I will treat a dog all day long for growling at me. I am operantly reinforcing the wrong behavior, but what am I doing classically? Just building up an association between yeah. me and the dog. Yeah. Guess what trumps operant conditioning all day long? Classical conditioning trumps it. I I reinforce um, I reinforce bad behaviors with my treat method all the time. Now it's harder to do with dog on dog aggression because the dog people we can say stand there, which is you find threshold. Okay, toss treats. Okay, come closer. Okay, don't open hand treats. Okay, now I want you to pet, then treat, pet, then treat, pet then treat dog gets used to the person then dog gets even more used to the person because the person's bringing a treat up then we associate the touching with the treat and then we get to where we want to go so is a so is slow exposure for a dog classical conditioning it's 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 more in the classical conditioning realm yeah just okay and then would you say that this operant conditioning so punishing or punishment reinforcement continuum, which you've diagrammed here. Yeah, I think so. This is a, this is part, or this is a subset of operant conditioning, right? It's, it's up, it's a, a subset. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a explanation kind of of it in a sense. It's a, some degree. it's a weird little corner of it that explains one aspect of it. And so with the classical conditioning piece, um, how, how are you looking at that from this, um, the exposure of the dog piece where you are slowly building or you're, you're showing, you're trying to associate, right? Cause it's saying pair desensitization. So you're trying to associate you're with this dog. Nothing bad's happening, even though you thought something bad was going to happen. Okay. Now we're slowly getting closer and closer. You're continuing to, are you educating the dog that like, there's nothing to be afraid of? Yeah. A number of things are going on. Um, the dog is desensitizing to me. Or to a dog, right? Prince goes on the deck. We'd let that go on for 10 minutes, just desensitization, sort of this natural process that all animals do, which is when a stimulus is, they're not used to the stimulus, then they're around the stimulus more. They just, they're, they're, everything just goes down, right? Some animals, one cat loves Prince, one cat still has not desensitized to Prince, even though Prince has done nothing scary to the cat. It takes one cat much longer. So then sense? you, oh, you put in sort of the treats coming from the person, let's say now you get into the operant conditioning realm a little bit while socialization and desensitization is happening. So desensitize to make, to make someone le less sensitive, less likely to feel shock or distress at scenes of cruelty, violence, or, I mean, that's, that's obviously terrible. like a, for kids and playing, um, oh. Video games, probably. Oh, so from a photo of, or right from, or yeah, to free someone, or probably a dog from a phobia or neurosis by gradually exposing <clears throat> the person to the thing that is it feared. Is feared. Right. That's the answer. Right. That's the that would be ours. Relevant right. one, right? Make less sensitive. Um. So, how do you think about from being a boss? If you were to be a boss, could you, you can use this continuum, right, to say if you are good at with like employees as an example. Um, rewarding good behavior that you're seeing, right? Yep. At the right level of reward. And then also yes. uh, providing some form of- There's write-ups, there's firing, there's just like, pay downgrades. But there's also just like a verbal, like there's that verbal, wasn't a very good job today. Right. And where does this sit? Where does, I mean, this is, this is not the, this, you understand this, right? The, the, the thing they did was horrible. They made an employee feel unsafe at work. That punishment needs to go beyond, yeah. well- they didn't get reinforced maybe for doing that. The behavior of itself though was so severe. We need to go to the other side of that. We probably punishment. all had bosses. And why would they the do continuum. that behavior if they weren't reinforced? Why did they do it if they weren't highly reinforced for it? You know, so you can kind of assume maybe there was a lot of reinforcement in there. I think they were, they were saying sexual things to an employee. Well, that's a big drive for them. Yeah. They don't and care about the job, right? They care about hooking up with a girl or doing whatever they're trying to do yeah. potentially. Right. Yeah. So, so let, let's get, unless you have another question, let's get into more dog behaviors. Okay. So my question around I said. punishment. Um, so really that ability to hit the right level of punishment and is, barely is, go over. And what I laugh about this a little bit, because I think about 
um, maybe the touch is the word that that smooth touch that a high level dog trainer has with a dog. Whereas when you start coaching folks on how to correct their dog, they've never done it before. And then it's like their dog does something undesirable and you're like, Hey, and then they go to correct it. And then it's like three to four seconds late. And they just like rip the dog's head off. And you're like, Whoa, bro, calm down with like, that was a sledgehammer. Yeah. You're, you're, you do the job for the most part. If you're on that punishing side around in or out of the, the same distance away from neutral as it all is on the reinforcement side. I'm not even saying to go beyond. You want to get the behavior done quick, go just beyond the same distance it is from the reinforcement side, but you can kind of do anything up to that neutral point on the punishing side. The behavior will just go away slower. Yeah. Right. They're still kind of getting reinforced for the behavior, but there's some punishment applied you could argue the behavior will eventually go away, but you want to get away quicker, go beyond it. Uh, like the, Hey, or whatever types of yep. markers that yep. you do, they are pretty powerful, right? For the ability. If you, if they know you're a no get type of guy like you, right? okay. The hay and the clap are essentially, they're barely punishing. They just sit on the other side of punishing on, on, uh, on from the neutral side. They're but not a punisher. They're a but, marker. But could in a, an incredibly loud, hey, it's from a, a deep voice man but, who they yeah, don't but, know could potentially be like. Well, yes. But is it more is it more punishing than the potential of a stake? Or, or, or even, even creep close to that? Not really. That's why you follow up. Then you fade out the, the, the grab. And what I, and sh- I have an, I have a counter in my office, right? And I've had it for 15 years. I've seen a lot of dogs get up on that counter. I eventually go, Hey, and then I actually do a move like I'm getting up, but I literally get to there. So you fade out, which by the way, fading is the key to operantly training things. you got to get rid of the treat. You got to fade these things out. You fade out the punishment. So I, I go get the dog, I grab him, I sit him down and I kind of go, Oh, okay, dude, he marked it. Then the punishment was applied. And then I eventually, I do that a few times. Then I eventually go, off or I can put a cue to it if I want, or I can go, Hey, and the dog literally is just like, I'm off. And they actually walk away from the counter in anticipation of the punishment. Then I eventually just have to go, Hey, and I actually, I yeah. still do the move personally. I'm, I add that little, I'm going to get up, but I don't get up. And then eventually I put a cue to it. You I mark, say off. Yeah. You mark the behavior <clears throat> and do the, whatever the Skinner version of punishing is. And then you slowly fade it away. Then when you mark it has an impact that it didn't have because it's already been trained. It's the associate. Yes. And now the hay actually has an association in the same classically, like classical, classically classical with, and yes, with the clicker too, it actually becomes highly reinforcing. Whereas a clicker actually has no reinforcing value in and of itself. The hay really has not much punishing value in and of itself. I was thinking more from like a young kid's perspective. If you have those gnarly big uncles that, they have that booming voice and you're like three and you're doing something wrong. And then they they do that like, Hey, and it just scares the ever loving hell out of you. You know? Yep. Like there's a level of punishment to that. Just, I would agree. I think there could be some differences, whereas it's, it's possible you at three have never heard a voice like that. I would argue a dog getting on a counter actually has heard a fair amount of haze. And so we need to actually apply more, um, actual punishment. Why am I doing this in quotes? Because, because it's not this is, what they think this is not what they think it is. Yeah. Oh, you can't use punishment. You use punishment every day a thousand times a day yeah. on your children and the people you love the most. When someone cuts Quit you acting off. like you don't when use someone punishment. cuts you off, right? And you look yeah. at them and give them a little sneer or like a, a, a look a look of disappointment. You use it a, you do it a thousand times a day. Yeah. So that's why you say quotes. That's why I say, Oh, you can't punish your dog. Of course you, you punish your dog all day long. You put a leash on your dog, it hits the end, you punish them, you for for force three people. So then it becomes a certain level. Yeah, it's, it's a levels, levels thing. Aggression. I mean, that's that that's a tougher deal with this, right? With this, because it be it's out of the operant stage, but it all applies right here. You got to understand where the behavior itself sits. You have a dog that enjoys fighting. You're in trouble. Bro, you, you know how long, how far down that reinforcement scale that is? Their brain isn't even, I mean, they click and they just go into a place of, 
I was meant to do this. I, I, I love this. How about a dog that doesn't enjoy fighting, but enjoys painting dogs, which is very common and really not that bad. Like dominant dogs sometimes like lay down for me. Okay. It's not good. It's not bad. How much things. is that dominance? I know dominant men, they are, they are dominant through and through. There's not many of them. There are actually a lot of fake dominant guys. I know a guy who's truly, he can't help it. I like, he's one of my best friends. He's Do that guy. Yeah. I think I know who you're talking about. He's that guy. I love him for it. Yeah. He's just, he can't change it. Yeah. And, yeah. and so that's who he is. And that's not even the reinforcement thing necessarily. It's, there's just things that are internal to dogs and to people that are really hard to get rid of that sex drive, that dominant nature, that, that, um, if you get into like a narcissist or something, like yeah. you can't even help narcissistic there's people. Become, they, yeah. They're, they're, they cannot they will, you can't recover from it. It's, it's, it's in you. It's, it's, neurosis, it's from a childhood yeah. trauma that you have a false reality of yourself. You literally, it, you literally don't, these things are deep. That's why the video. Oh, and the video I was going to show you guys is this pipple going at this lady on the bed. I wasn't going to trash the lady or anybody because it's a, that dog's mentally ill. Yeah. Like when you get into the mental illness, this stuff doesn't apply. Mental illness, this operantly doesn't fix mental illness, generally speaking. Yeah, but there is a level of Caesar Milanish, right, with the pack leader stuff that, uh, especially as it relates to new environments, right, where I think we were talking about this on the podcast like 10 episodes ago about how, um, sir, obviously there's problems with um, drug use in Vietnam and so forth, but when they came back, some people, because of the new environment, different people weren't there, the drugs weren't available for okay. them or whatever, and they just stopped abusing heroin or whatever at that point. And so it was like, but uh, it's kind of like, my point is more around Caesar of, they, of course they have this pack that they integrate into and the dogs will do the corrections on the, the small dog generally or whatever. Yes. But he, his calm assertive energy, as he likes to say, is essentially, um, creating a new scenario for the dog in us in some ways, which could get better, maybe like way better results by itself than the old habits and right. home that they right. live in currently. I see right? it every day in my facility. Yeah. Cause yeah. they don't have as big of a problem when you take the leash. Well, that's, that would be what I call, um, a hit, uh, um, I call it like, um, <clears throat> uh, rehearsal of behavior. Mm -hmm. So I can take a leash of a dog, literally not do anything and the dog is different. I do nothing different from the owner because I'm just a different guy, right? Oh, that's why I say change the stimulus of the mm -hmm. collar. I'll go, if they're on a choke chain, I'll go to regular. If they're on a regular, I'll go to easy walk. If it, if they don't, if it doesn't work on an e easy walk, I'll go to a regular. You have to change the feeling or the rehearsal of the behavior on that thing because they've done so much badness on that thing. Yeah. Your Vietnam analogy that the minute you change it, there's a thing in the brain that just the everything, the feeling changes. You're almost like marking a new environment or something like this is a new area in which things are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can be, could be different. I took a dog, that video I did of the Great Dane posted it a month ago. I re I rarely have the clients leave. I had him leave for 30 minutes. I changed the dog. I got the dog with dogs. I got the dog with people. I said, when you come back, you have to walk in a different human being. I said it on the video, in mm -hmm. fact because we had this opportunity of newness that we're going to never have again. If, if that got, because he's got to leave the dog with me, the dog has to do a bunch of fun stuff. Then he's got to rock in a new person. If he just, if he just gives me the leash and then changes, or he tries to change while the dog's on the leash, the dog, it won't work. So anyway. theoretically, yeah. do you think there is many areas, whether it's, kind of the classical conditioning or the operant conditioning that don't pretty much equally apply to humans <clears throat> other than uh, mentally ill people in dogs you mean no i mean like these principles still apply almost equally with humans like obviously with the classical conditioning example where these early childhood traumas or issues right. have caused them to act neurotically or, you or know, whatever, badly. What, yeah. Whatever they're doing. And so obviously 
somebody, maybe it's a psychologist or some, some new stimulus can come in and be like, we have to rebuild you in a yeah. way, but they, all these principles still more or less hold true. Just the way this would be holding true with the reinforcement yeah. versus punishment. Yeah. Right. So there's no, not much of a difference. A difference in what? In how things work. You, you, you wouldn't say operant condition conditioning works on dogs. If oh. it's done correctly, you'd say, well, oh, it also no. works on humans too. Oh, it's all, this is just behavior. Works, works on, on rats. Now, there's problems with operant conditioning. There's giant problems with operant conditioning. And this is where I like hate what? to... <laughs> the tests were done with rats in cages. Yeah, but The hitting of levers was done in an environment that was the most boring environment in the history of the world. But maybe That is a real problem. But maybe that's not a problem with operant conditioning, but it's a problem with Skinner's experiments. Well, it's, a it's a problem with applying it to the real world. Yeah. It works with zoo animals. I'm from, I'm from the world of operant conditioning. They're in a cage. They're in the water. They literally have nothing else going on. Whereas people... Whereas people, there's a lot more going on. There's a lot more stimuli out there with dogs on walks. There's a lot more. This doesn't always apply. But you see what I'm saying, right? The not conflating. Uh, yes. Not I conflating do. one guy, one experiment with a uh, uh, an approach or a a uh, not even a diagnosis of op what operant conditioning really is. Yes, the behaviors are true. They put rats and they said, okay, we're going to go to a one-to-one -one ratio. You hit the lever, one piece of food comes out. Then they were like, okay, what if we make him hit it twice before a few piece? Okay, what if we went to a variable schedule? Well, the rat ended up going duh, 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 and hitting the freaking lever a thousand times for one treat. So they came up with all this. So your point is, yes, it's true behaviorally. Mm -hmm. I think this is your point. It doesn't, we're, he's not wrong. Skinner wasn't wrong. But he's right only in, in, in controlled environments. Prisons, you could probably get to get to this stuff holding somewhat true. There's a lot of stuff in prisons. We both watch prison videos. We love those, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your boy, Wes Watson. More than we should. But, yeah. Um, Shout out, Wes Watson. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So dog, animals in a zoo environment, that's why, that's why a lot of these dog trainers don't know what they're talking about. They take their cues from zoos. And from SeaWorld, these animals can't go anywhere. So I have a thought. These experiment. rats can't go anywhere. If I came up with an example of something I saw in prison, I wonder if you could name a dog that you've worked with that would be very similar to this person. Okay. Okay, quick. Say so basically the idea is that it was on one of these, these jail shows, but essentially the guy was in prison and they would say like, you need to cuff up. And he'd be like, I'm not cuffed up, but he wanted to tangle. So he like liked to fight, right? So they would eventually come in there uh, with either, um, some type of pepper spray or whatever. And there would be like 14 cops or, um, you know, whatever they call them, prison guards that would come in there yep. and he would just fight him to the death and they'd eventually get a hold of him. And then the whole time you'd be like, let's, let's go again tomorrow. Right. So he actually yep. enjoyed okay. this thing. I don't need to explain this to you. Why? Cause you know, no, but I'm talking about, do you think of a dog that you're oh, like, that's that what dog. You that's what you wanted. Right, right, right. We all, okay. So let's just say why that guy would do that. There's a number of reasons why you do that. He's well, bored, say, right? It, it gets him, well, one, it would get him street cred in the yard if he ever makes it to the yard, right? Yeah. You, they're, they're like, this guy This guy will brawl 15 um, um, guards. Mm -hmm. he, he's got credit in the yard. Am I right? You're, yeah. you're a prison guy. Okay. I'm not really a prison guy. But <laughs> you watch <laughs> Okay. Uh, how about I do watch Locked how Up? About, how about the, um, the thing that goes on in, in his head, in his mind when he's fighting? Right. He's getting all worked up. It's great. He's getting going. Right. The same way you like working out. Okay. He, he's getting a re but is he also not getting a reinforcement for being like, you don't tell me what to do kind of attitude? Yeah. He could. Yeah. There could be many levels of reinforcement in there. The, the, then there's an eventual consequence, which is sitting in the hole for a month. The problem with that is, is it's kind of, I don't know if we trumped, if the hole trumps plus the hole for a month is, is, is parsed out, right? Yeah. There's, there's only a little bit of punishment it's not a each correction day. Real quick. That's there's the, the clarity isn't there. Now, if you said you, you hit the guy over the back of the head with a baseball bat, 
They can't do that. I don't think the guards can't do that. It would probably be a more effective thing than the whole for a month, but you get into corporal punishment and all this stuff yeah. where you just can't do that. That's probably the way to fix that. This sort of instant yeah. marker that is so severe, so painful that, that it might get rid of that behavior. The whole for a month, he also might have, there could be um, um, psychological problems, right? Which, what did we say about that? Most, they, they, most certainly there's some level. Well, I was thinking too, there's just like a, a defiant personality that, and also probably like you said earlier, a true alpha male who's like, I'm no not- one tells me anything. Yeah, like I don't care if you have a gun or whatever or a badge, yeah. I will- I will never surrender to you. Yeah. And, but also I think it, it relates to the dog because it's like the actual, like the punishment of we're going to grab you, spray you and rough you up is actually a reinforcement to him. Like, cause he actually likes the fight. Yeah. And probably the attention that yeah, comes yeah. along with the it. attention, you know, a lot of kids, they, they'll do stuff for attention, but, um, okay. You here, here's this the, dog. the best podcast ever, ever. So. Here's the dog. Okay. It's a, uh, I don't even know if I say this dog's right. An, alibi or a tibetan mastiff i see these videos of these dogs and there's actual wolves not like north american canadian gray wolves which are massive but sort of the kazakhstani these smaller wolves and he's around a big piece of meat and all these wolves and he's like putting all these wolves down that is a alpha dog mm -hmm. that is that that would have to be attacked by a bigger alpha dog and pinned so many a few times at least before he actually got the the hint that he's not top dog so maybe maybe that would be that i wouldn't say it's like the pit bull that loses his mind and says i'm going to kill that other i i think it's almost more of a dominance a dominance thing than it is a mind switch mm -hmm. that 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 five percent of pits have in them that says I'm going to go and I'm going to go hard and I'm not going to stop till that thing stops moving. That's real. By the way, anyone who says that's not real, you need to work with more pit bulls. Well, you need to be in the 20, 30, 40, a hundred pit bull range to understand that's real. what I say. 5%. That means you could work with 10 pit bulls and never see it. You work with yeah. 20, you might see one that you don't have the correlation yet. You work with a hundred, you're going to see five pit bulls that are like that. And you're going to start to go, Oh, you work with a thousand labs you probably won't see the lab that tries to disfigure somebody kill and shake another dog till it stops moving so what i like about this conversation is a uh, long time ago when we were talking about the idea of beckman unleashed and maybe being some oh, type of video you thing unleashed? uh well you well i was thinking unhinged more than unleashed but they're both work unleashed. they work pretty good but so the, the we always love the element of nature in oh, yeah. wild animals and, and prisons. how, yeah, prisons and how things really work though. Right. Yeah. Like, like this, you know, we've talked about this on the podcast, but you know, prisons and things like that, they are the way they are. You might not like them or not want to look at what is happening in there, but the human behavior, there is human behavior that's happening in as chaotic as it might seem from the outside, things are happening in there for a specific reason. Yeah. We could study that. That is true. What I was thinking though it is should be studied. You can be an alpha male pit bull or you can be an alpha male anything, right? And um generally a non mentally ill agent or whatever, they would know, okay, this guy's way bigger than me, way stronger than me, way tougher than me, and way more intense than me. I should probably back down so I don't get shaken to death. Yes. But then what what I love about what I was just trying to say about this this Beckman Unleashed thing is I watched recently, it was um one of the mini lion versus hyena situations yep, yep. where it's like that lion, the male lion eventually grabs that hyena and basically chomps it. It's like that that lion wants to kill that hyena. Yeah. That's now, a very unique relationship in the wild though. But they're coming in to stop him. So it's like there is, but it's not that it's not that the hyena isn't tough. He's very tough. But, tough as it gets but but the thing is is where you uh, you have you have two sides of it you have the the person or dog or whatever that believes it's the alpha and will not give up no matter what but in nature a lot of times they'll just die because that al that line will get a hold of you and he doesn't care how tough you think you are he'll just yeah, smash yeah, you yeah, yeah. and he'll eat you yeah 
which is you great. Know, just like what if you're a what if you're a really alpha gazelle? You know what I mean? Yeah, you'll you'll hump a lot of women, <laughs> a lot of female gazelles, but you're gonna die. But that when that lion gets a, you're gonna learn who the king yeah. of the jungle is. Yeah, but being an alpha even in gazelle world would be good for the male, bad for the female. She's got no role in the gazelle society of being an alpha female. Makes no sense. But the male would actually be selected for because in alpha because he uh, would possibly fight the other males off. But then it doesn't matter when the lion comes how alpha you are. I did I mention last week? I love lions. Did I mention last I week them. about the hippo and in the elephant fight? No, I've probably seen it. But it was amazing because you think you hear that rhinos and hippos are just super tough, they which are. obviously they are, right? But everything is relative, right? Yeah, you're tough until you know until the elephant comes in the room. Oh, yeah. And and so the um, I think the hippo was with its baby, and it wanted, it was I think it was trying to protect its baby, and it was afraid, and so the the elephant was just trying to kind of pass by. Yeah. And because of it, I think the the hippo went at the elephant. Yeah. The elephant was like. You want to roll, bro? And he and he he started sticking his um, tusks into the side of him, and he like yeah. launched him into the muddy water. Yeah. And uh, the hippo was like, "Oh, like this is going down," and it starts taking off with its kit. And that elephant started charging after it. And then you're like, the and that's like the joke. I think I've told it on the podcast about you know the the lion asks everyone who the king of the jungle is, right? And then they're like, "You are Mr. Lion." And then the elephant smashes yes. the lion. And he goes. You don't have to get mad because you don't know the answer. Yeah. But it truly is. We all think the lion is the king of the jungle, but he's not. He's no, not really the, the, in the jungle. elephant is the king of everything in this world besides humans. He is the biggest on land, the toughest on land. Yeah. 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 Uh, There's uh, nothing close, right? It's Currently? nothing close. No. Because even hippos are monstrous and it's, powerful. That's nothing. But they're small compared to an elephant. Yeah. The hippo rhino one's a good one. That's actually a pretty close one. They're about um, the same size, right? About uh, hippos Rhinos? weigh more. All oh, water really? animals generally weigh more. So you'll see like a dolphin. And you're like, oh, that's a good size dolphin. It's 800 pounds. You're like, what? It, they, they, water animals are, are they're packed differently. Like more puffy or they're, what? There's more in there. Okay. There's more. Uh, uh, if you saw a 12,000 pound killer whale, it would not look as big as a 12,000 pound um um, bull elephant. They're just, they're different. It's all, they're heavier because they can be heavier. They're in water. They're heavier than they look. This is not an exciting topic. This well, is a Joel topic. But I still think, so I, I thought it was interesting. I was listening to that book. Uh, so outside. the hippo, the hippo generally is actually weighs more than that rhinoceros. Although I think that they look very similar size. Go ahead. But that rhinoceros is, um, tusk is something that you don't want to get smashed with too much. Probably. Oh yeah. And the hippos do the stupid thing, right? Their whole thing is that mouth open. Mm -hmm. So their mouth opens and it literally opens like this big and there's two tusks and every animal looks at them and goes, the hell is that? Like yeah. there's no horn. There's no, it's just this massive thing that goes real skinny, then goes real wide, then goes real skinny there. And animals are always tripped out by it. Yeah, I think if I was a rhino, I'd go around whooping hippos because I'm actually tougher than rhinos are way tougher than hippos. Did you see where the 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 hippo bit the lion's lower jaw? Did you see that the one? Hippo? Yes. He oh I he like grabbed a hold of its head. It's like yeah. face. The the hippo goes and grabs the lion. But and then you know like that yeah that lion's gonna die right because no he his, ran away no but his lower jaw was like destroyed. Oh, I didn't see that. You didn't one. see that one? Can and we won't it show it. I mean, you can, if you want to. I mean, hey, we're already so far enough I don't the think podcast. you're going to find it because <clears throat> um, I've never seen it. If I've never seen it. Are you trying to say if you've never seen it, it doesn't exist? I am. So you're saying a hippo bit the no. jaw of a lower lot of a lion? Yeah. Their big ass mouth bit the it's little ass mouth. Hippo of a, bites lion jaw off. I would bet. I would the, bet it is too. The one it is. And we could just do a. Don't uh, okay. Put it on mute. Okay, let me put it on mute here. We don't need to. This, have this is going to be out of control. Um, it's okay. on mute. Okay, so we're good, All right? right. I'm loving this. Okay, so sorry, I have to hide your continuum for a second here. Um, no, the are continuum's we the okay. greatest thing ever. Okay, so share screen. Does the continuum make sense, everybody? Yeah, we write it in your comments. One. And then, um, how the continuum doesn't make sense, and I'm I will destroy you on how it makes sense. I'm kidding. I love the pod, you guys. Then, 
can also say for the prison want. folks like if you've ever been hit by a prison guard like leave that in the comments too like yeah because you were ca challenging whether that actually happens or not so for all of our jailbirds I so was. this is it i didn't want to show this because of the, the violence ahead. of it go but ahead. uh so no audio looks okay. like a hippo. hippo oh you go ahead and comment on it. oh how long is this thing it's all not right that long, so think. this line's doing the thing to the hippo it's just not even that big of a hippo actually look at that it's crazy how hippos though like it's pretty big huh yeah, oh, it's I mean, doing it's what big. you're saying, right? It's doing that big. That's not even the worst one. But yes, yes. Okay. Bro, there's his jaw. Look at his jaw. You have no idea what happened. I guess they didn't. No, no. They show the one where he grabs it by the head, though. It's um, right there. This one right here. I don't know why do it, it doesn't show it. Are they not going to show it? Bro, what is because it on? didn't happen. You think it's cooking you. the books? Oh, that's horrible. It doesn't show it. Let's see if it. It's I just thought a... I saw it. It's probably. I know. It, you got fooled. I could have. You... This could have been one of those. You are the biggest. You ever see a male hippo kill a baby? It's horrible. There could be a bunch of mishmashes, right? That's what I'm saying. I just told you if 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 I fun. haven't seen it, it it's not a video on YouTube. It doesn't exist. Holy cow! What are those birds doing to that thing? Yeah, eating them, eating all kinds of things. Yeah, I have to find it. That's no, tragic. it doesn't exist, bro. You keep going. I'm gonna I'm gonna find it while you're looking. Look at this is this is what I don't like. What is that? Just, a bunch of yeah. He's gonna die probably. Who the hippo? Yeah, I mean if he's that's too many lions. If he hasn't gotten out of there by now, he's yeah. got he's got a problem. That's the issue. Hands. That's the issue though, <clears throat> right? With um, like a lot of the stuff with the wild is that even when you win, you can lose, right? Because if you get some type oh, of yeah. injury, oh, he got away. If that's the same video, so I don't understand. Got away. See, that's what they do. And then every other animal's just like, what? I mean, they're doing it to each other. Wait, you're not putting it up here, bro. No, I know, because I want to look for it while right. everything's happening. Oh, yeah, here, here's this one. Holy cow. Yeah, here's this one. That's a little rhino, though. He doesn't have his full tusk. Yeah. Like, a lot of this depends on size, right? Like, it's someone will see a smaller bear going up against a different type of animal, and they'll go, oh, that's, you know, see, they beat him. It's like, well, that's just one element of it. Um, Baby dead hippo horrible oh this is bad the Have hippo yeah he kills the gazelle so hippos don't see well so he's just hippos just all worked up kills the gazelle um on accident sorry because he's just all worked up are these guys not gonna show this or what we're gonna end up no this is this, on this is one i've seen a hundred times this one isn't that the one no but he bites the lion's head but it wasn't that the one where he messed up his jaw no he bites the lion no no, 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 watch right Oop. there. That's it. That was what I was looking for. I know, but he doesn't, the lion's fine. It doesn't hurt his jaw. No, it's, it's, it's the lion's fine. Oh, they, oh, they, 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 they uh, mishmashed they hood, it. They hoodwinked Bro, me, man. You are the oh. master of not wanting to get hoodwinked in these videos. And I got, and you got hoodwinked because we just talked last week, right? About those talk moose elk videos where they say, Oh, he had to get the people's attention. Then he takes him to this, yeah, this place where the baby was in distress. Yeah, and, then it, and it's a different video. And they get like a hundred yeah. million views. And you just got hooked. I got smoked. <clears throat> wow. You do know your um I know my violent African savanna stuff, right? Yeah. Wow. Okay, quick story. I worked at a place with um uh, um a lion, a female lion, and a hyena. They would all they would be transferred to this big area once a week. So the lion would have to run past a wolf, a mountain lion, I think a coyote, a tiger, and a, and a hyena. And a guess, guess which animal, the lion that was born in captivity and the hyena that was born in captivity, guess which animal when the lion was running through, because the cages were all along this area where the lion had to run to get to this other area, he'd have to pass all the, the wolf, the tiger, Mountain lion he'd, and the hyena, he'd have to pass. Guess which animal he'd stop and fight with through the bars? The wolf. Incorrect. <laughs> the hyena. It's so deep in them to hate and kill the other one. Guess. So lions do a, oh, oh. Hyenas do a, God, what was it? He would do like, um, Look at the weasel sound. No, it wasn't the laughing stuff. It was actually a different call that the hyena would do. The lion would do his call. Guess the only animal that would chime in right after the lion, the hyena, the weasel, the hyena, they are closest to weasels, but, and then the hyena would do his call at some point. 
guess what? The only animal that would, the wolf wouldn't howl. The, the tiger wouldn't do anything. The freaking lion. He'd some let, beefs, they had to let each, some beefs. They run deep though. You yeah. Know? Like, Crips and bloods. Yeah. Or it's like, um, something from game of Thrones, you know, like the Targaryens or something. Oh yeah. And, yeah. The Targaryens know. in the, um, what's the, the North uh, or no. the Lannisters, the Lannisters and the Northerners. Yeah. Yeah. You're born into it. I love like, you hate them. I love that. Like somebody lets you borrow money and then you give them back the five bucks and you're like, a Lannister always pays his debts. Oh, I've never said that. I, that my wife got me into that show and it's I, great. I, cause I, I, I said what everyone says that hasn't watched that show, which is I don't care about dragons. Dragons aren't real. I don't want to watch it. And then you see it and you're like, this is so good. What was so I thinking? Good. That was what I was thinking. I wish I had more time to watch those classic. I'm going to watch it again. It I, takes only, me like I think I've only year. seen it one full time. Oh, you got to see it again. I still remember the red wedding. And, um, and also I, I I've been sucked into the whole TikTok thing a little bit. Mm. And I see all this um, classic Sopranos stuff. Oh, you really? It makes me want to watch oh, one Sopranos. Yeah. And, and it shows that. And yeah. so um, they, they do these like highlights of the young, the young nephew or whatever of Tony. I don't know who he is, but he's the guy who's dating the girl. Um, yeah. Like Chris Maltesante. That's right. And then they also do the older guy with the grayish blackish hair. Yeah. Who had the hairstyle like that. Polly. Who's like a legit gangster, I believe in the past. Um, he was kind of, yeah. yeah he was like street. Crack a lot guy. of those guys were. Yeah. So then some they, but they would show like, like highlight, highlight, highlight of these guys. And, it just, yeah. and then I'm like, Oh, I need to watch this. Yeah. It's a good show. You know, it's a best so. show. anything um, dog related or no dogs. We should, we should, we, I, Dude, bro, we spent 45 minutes on dogs on the continuum. I know. So that was heavy. I hope that people understand uh, what the continuum is and how, how they can reduce a behavior by understanding the inherent, nature reinforcing value of a behavior and then applying timely proper corrections or technically punishment in this case to reduce the behavior there's other ways to reduce a behavior by the way without corrections there is the behavior just not being reinforcing then there are trainers who will say why am i guess counter surfing is just a good example trainers that will say well, we don't believe in punishment. So you should reinforce your dog. This is what they say. And it's the craziest thing ever. They will reinforce their dog every time their dog does not jump on the counter. Hey, I've got another example for you. Which is never ending, right? Because they don't jump on the <laughs> You're counter. You're just most hoping of the time. that the reinforcement of not jumping will eventually get to the point where where it 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 sort of overtakes all the time and there's no time for the jumping. The problem is that they don't realize is the inherent value in jumping or counter surfing. There's value, there's reinforcement in it yeah. that they're getting and just reinforcing them when they don't do it is hard to do. What did I say? How far you go down that, that, that punishment thing is, is how quick the behavior will be reinforced. I could teach my, there's two, there's a few ways to teach my kids not to steal. <clears throat> I could look at them and say, if you ever steal, here's what's going to happen. You might go to jail. You might be in trouble. You might, I could say a number of things. Or every time we leave a store, I could give them a dollar for not stealing. What do you think is better way to do it? What do you think is quicker? What do you think is easier? What do you think is the first? The former is an easier way. Or you do like my mom did. I stole a caramel. I was like five or 10. She made me go back to the store and give back to them. But also, she could have just given me a given me a piece of candy every time I didn't steal. But th I think the problem with that, which is insane, giving someone a dollar thing, is you are assuming that they're giving gonna pay someone it. a dollar associates that in any way. Even I know. if you tell that's them, the, that's the problem. Yeah, is it, even know. if you tell and them, I but I, it was either Dynamart, Mister Dynamart, I think, or uh, what is it, Off Grid Dogs or whatever, one of the two, who left a oh, comment last on. week about not talking about certain force free folks. Not that we really bring people's names up, but my thought on that though was um, it's tough. It's tough to have a podcast where you're trying to communicate things, including punishment and, you know, operant conditioning, right. And not and, talk about what they may have heard. Yeah. Not what they may have heard, but also you've got a channel like this and then videos that you do where a someone might be threatening you or they might be just really, really 
negative and critical at what you're doing. And then you have the next level of like um, dog daddy where somebody's actually being, you know, canceled, so to speak. So it's like, it's hard to avoid it the is. fact that this is a very contentious issue and that what we're, what you're trying to teach is actually has higher stakes than one might think. And there's a shit ton of flack that can come from just doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. That's why we potentially <clears throat> might bring stuff like that up from yeah, the other I, side. I, I read that comment and it wasn't off grid dogs. He would never say that. It was somebody who said, Hey, you guys, you talk too much about the positive only folks. I've thought about that throughout this podcast. Okay. It only comes out when it comes out. Like I, it only comes out and I've actually changed my, because of that comment, I've said a little bit like some trainers will do as opposed to the force free folks. I've now saying, because I, I agree. I don't want to become this. We're always railing against this group. I, so I, I'll say it, you know, I'll say it. And I can't change yeah, one not. comment or I can't just change things. But he's right in a way of like, we can't just be like, always go after these <clears throat> these people because the message is lost if it becomes, it seems like something else. It's for one, spur, one certain yeah, I'm trainer trying. or a number of trainers. Yeah, that's not what I'm doing. Yeah. My, also, I remember talking to you about this this week as well, where you have a criteria to talk about training of aggressive and reactive dogs. And that criteria is if you want to talk about it, you've got to be about it and you have to show your work. So it's a good way to put it. So since you have that kind of, um, what do you call it? Criteria criteria to do that. You know, when other people are trying to sell people on why your way is wrong, and they're effective at, at convincing a lot of people that your way is wrong when I don't believe that's true. Then it's like, am I just going to ignore the fact that 50% of the YouTube population is getting a totally different story and not address the, um, but what I told you the other day, like on Tuesday or something like that was when, if you do train those dogs, you don't want to be giving too much credit or too much love to people that are criticizing who are not training those dogs. Whereas a dog daddy or a Garrett wing, if they had a B for a different a difference of opinion, they're at that level of training so many dogs that you're like, okay, well we got to address this. So it is in part my job <clears throat> in not it's my, my main job is to educate, show you guys videos, do this podcast, talk about the continuum and things that will help your life. That is by far my main job. I have another job. And my job is to educate people on the best way to train and in part, well, that that's, yes, that's the my first part. Part of that is by saying this other way that you might have heard of, that you might be shouted down with in the streets or in the comment section or by your in-laws, and you might be told, and they might be able to articulate it very well, it is part of my job to say, here's why, and it's your job to believe me or not, right? If I say, the force-free people have to show you the videos because they're not in the trenches and they don't get it, and their talk doesn't matter, not it matters a little bit, it actually doesn't matter until they attempt to do it with the aggressive Dogo Argentino. It is partly my job to bring that to your attention because you may have never thought about that. In the same way, Jordan Peterson, I will watch him and I will go, I've never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. Because why the heck would I think of it that way when that's not my job to think about You're these social that, issues yeah. in this unique way and I, I haven't, it's not my job. So he says things and I go, that's genius. I've never thought about it. Well, my dog is jo dog training. It's my job to tell you yeah, why you should or shouldn't believe that. Then you can, you can say, oh, Joel, they can, they can talk to me as much as they want about how to train my aggressive dog. <clears throat> I love when they talk to me about it. You're wrong. That's fine. If yeah. you love it. Keep listening. Yeah. Then, then, then do it. And it, then maybe you'll get to a point where it doesn't work and you go, ah, maybe I'll listen to this Beckman cocky, arrogant Beckman guy. Yeah. 
And you might not get to that point. It depends on your level of pain and your level of, um, um, what's it called when you indoctrination and your, then you, you, you might hit that threshold and you might, and your level of open-mindedness, but it's up to you. I can just give you the facts. And cool. th me saying that is not my opinion. Me saying you have to show the videos is not my opinion. How is that an opinion? But no, I mean, pr uh, teaching, fact. teaching the, the, the idea of teaching and the idea of learning, right? Say you're going to mentor somebody. And the first thing you say is, well, there's a couple different ways to grow up, right? You can grow up and you can join a gang, right? Um, and you can gangbang or you can get a job and you can start working. And it's like, well, there's a lots of good, you could take a lot of good things away from gangbanging. It's like, yeah, but I need to kind of point them in the, <laughs> the direction I need them to go. That's a good point. And so it's like you, by ignoring that. And then also like, I even think about, um, like learning things like, la like learning languages. Right. So people would say, you want to learn how to speak Spanish? Uh, just go to school, just go to high school. You learn your Spanish Yeah. and they go, but but is it actually true? And then you go, you know, you meet people six, seven years of school. Nothing. They can't speak Spanish at all. They go to the country for a year. They speak fluent Spanish. Yeah. And, that, and, and I actually, fluent, I, but... yeah. And I speak an okay amount of Spanish and better than your average gringo. Right. And what I found is that by actually speaking it is how I learned. Yeah. And the, yeah. the reason I figured this out though, is I was seeing a four to five year old who could speak at a much better level than I could, who'd never even been to school. And I'm thinking, well, look at that. They speak way better than someone who spent five, six, seven years doing it. Mm -hmm. What's the reason? Learning. Because the, the method of learning, and, and I'm, my daughter's running into this a bit with high school where she's getting into the higher levels of Spanish, but she doesn't get to speak Spanish. Right. So you're not training the dogs. You're not speaking Spanish. You're not doing the thing you're talking about. That's right. And so it's like, why am I not getting good at Spanish? Why am I not getting good at aggressive dogs? Well, because you don't listen to Spanish and you don't speak Spanish and you don't read Spanish that much. Yeah. And now you don't, you wonder why you don't speak Spanish. Yeah. My, my daughter does Duolingo. She's, she's, uh, every night she does a little phrase on Duolingo. Mm -hmm. The only reason she does it is because she's got this insane, it's like 700 days or 500 In days. Like that's my daughter though. She's like that. My daughter can't speak a lick of, yeah. of Spanish. And you know how I learned how to do it, right? Yeah, your trips to Mexico. Well, no, before that, I oh. was doing an online that's called italki. And essentially, you just get on video and pay like someone in a foreign country like Colombia or Peru or Mexico. Or and you just them. talk online. And so what's funny, and it actually gets back into, cool. and I hate to get it back into dog training, but let's see that for a second, is the, re I was thinking, explain this reinforcement to me. Imagine I had a, a teacher who's in Chile who was helping me out. And so imagine saying something um, and you say it slightly off, right? Like a verb in the wrong tense or something, okay. right? And you say, you say, estuve, and he says, estaba, right? But he he kind of yells at you, right? You're like, uh, yo, estuve, and he goes, estaba. And you go like, whoa, like he interrupted me to say you said it wrong, right? Yeah. So you're getting that, that immediate feedback that the way you said it was wrong, yep. and then you correct that feedback, yes, right? Perfect. So, so versus how do you do that sitting with your Spanish book, right? You just don't get that feedback. So you never know. And you're just not giving the practice. Either, Great. Right. Yeah. So what would that be called? The, the shouting interruption. It'd be a mark. It would be, be a marker. It would be, it would stop your rehearsal of the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it would be, it wouldn't really be much of a punishment because you're not, he's not scolding you. He's essentially stopping you from rehearsing doing it wrong. Yeah. Which is very true it's and very huge and very powerful. The more you, we talked about it in this podcast, right? Just the doing the thing over and over again. Pathways in the brain or your pathways were formed in saying it wrong. Yeah. And he had to shout it out of you to stop that pathway in the mix. My, mm -hmm. my clap method or my walk into them on jumping method or my release correction or my whatever is a, is a sort of immediate stop and, and, and do those. It's like a rewiring of the those neurons almost, right? It is. Yeah. See, that's, that's amazing. Cause if you think about, um, even with like language production is when you're trying to, when you're trying to speak for the first time to the thousandth time, your brain is turning, like trying to figure out what to say. So there's an actual process of trying to like 
generate it. So if you never open your mouth and start speaking and you spend five There's years, a whole Spanish, missing piece. Yeah. You never even right. go it, in the backyard. If and you never dog. have an aggressive dog on a leash, you're, you're missing 80% of it. And, and that's not an opinion. I, I don't, it's, it's because it's just not an opinion. And, but don't you kind of laugh? Because okay. Maybe see... it's 80% is an opinion. Maybe it's 70, maybe it's 90. It's not an opinion. But think it's about sits and stays, right? Stuff. You see me with my dog that I don't own and I start doing basic obedience and I, I show you and you'd be like, cool, bro. That's cool. Good job. Yeah. And you're not going to be blown away. Now, if I took a super aggressive dog in front of you and, and you know, shaped the behavior, you'd be like, wow, that was cool. Right. But it's, it's apples and oranges, right? Yeah. It's, it's <clears throat> just like, uh, handling the, um, financial advisor who you're getting in an argument right at the grocery store versus dealing with a, you know, an irate inmate in the penitentiary. <laughs> like, yeah you can't say they're the same type of, they're both a disagreement, but one has way higher. That's a good example. I'm getting paid the big bucks for that. I should get a bonus. Yeah. Oh, it's coming. (laughs) Yeah, sure. As soon as we start making money on this podcast, your giant bonus will come. We technically make money. It's just so small (laughs) that we don't notice or we don't really check it. (laughs) Or we don't care. Yeah. Um, No, that's a good example, bro. Yeah. I, I know you have a, um, stakes are high. You better get good at something, man. Yeah. You're going to go to Mexico and you, you, I mean, you can go to Mexico without learning the language, but, um, and it's amazing too, example. even just last thing I'll say about that is when I was out there, uh, for a week in Mexico, I mean, yeah, in Mexico in like Sonora, I brought you back to Mexico. I was, I love Mexico. I was out there and I'm speaking to everyone in Spanish Yeah, I know. and it is just better. Yeah. I'm just in the mix. I, I got all the dogs around me, you know, I'm really doing I'm really doing it. You're in it. All the senses yeah. are happening. You're getting eating, better by so many different ways of getting better at Spanish. Yeah, we're eating types of food. Because you're immersed. You hear how they're saying it. They're talking about the type of, you know, putting salt on things and everything. Inf- and the inflection. Yeah, it's all there. And, and then the hand like, motions. Like they were saying. Wait, wait, you can't get that from reading a book? No, I know. They go. They Bro, go just read articles and papers on how to learn a language. They go like. Come on, go, bro. Dale, dale. And I'm like, why do you keep saying dale? They're like, I think it's short for andale. And I was thinking some of them, they um, they would say, like, don't even listen to what we're saying in Spanish. They're like, we aren't even speaking the right way. And I'm like, I don't even care what the right way is. I want to speak the way you guys are speaking. That's yeah, better. I don't care how they're speaking in the in the university. No one talks like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No one trains dogs like that around here. Yeah. All right. Back. That's enough. Can we do a, can every time, can we write on this wall? Every time there's something to do with dog training that relates to the real world, we write that thing on the wall. What's well, everything. Yeah. So we just put like Spanish. Behavior. What's the definition of behavior or one of them? It's movement. Is it action? What is the That's definition movement. of behavior? No, but my, my first behavior teacher wrote this the first day. He's like, what's the definition of behavior? It's movement. You could argue it's even brain movement, right? There's little movement in your brain with electrons. You can argue that. This is not, there's many be- definitions of behavior and the way in which one acts or conducts itself. I disagree. Well, the way in which an animal or person acts in response, response to a particular situation or stimulus, um, yeah. the way in which a I'd natural say, phenomenon or a machine works or functions. Right. Mo- movement, in my opinion. Yeah, there's a lot. So how, do, how does dog Your stuff- Your professor and, was wrong, bro. How does dog stuff and uh, and, and people stuff, it, it all applies. It's all similar. Um, um, we, can ju- we can do it all day and talk about the application of it. Now, aggression and what I do is much more common in the dog world. I would say, well, maybe not. If we like let the prisons loose or something, it would be different. What do you mean? Like there's more. I'm in the world of aggression, right? That's kind of my thing. It's you look at my channel. There's there's unsocializedness, and it manifests itself in aggression and potentially dangerous behaviors. I said, I just said, it's more in the dog world, and I would think I would agree with that. But if you open the gates of the prisons all over this country, it's possible it would be more in your everyday life. And even right now, it is in our everyday life. And if you have kids and you live in a major city. I think and you're not also thinking de- about that stuff. You there's something you got to be thinking about that. It depends on the life stage you are too. I think when you're in junior high school, high school, I think aggression is more 
you know, you can't get away from it. It could be even some people you would label your friends and other people. But if you think about, and I think I've mentioned this on the podcast before, that when I was freshman in high school, it was like I had, you're going to be surprised by this. I had like a really big mouth, right? Yeah. I talked a lot of crap. I know you won't, you can't believe that, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but I talked a lot of crap. But eventually, if you talk enough crap, there are other guys in the school that don't like that. Yes. And in which case you're something's going to come to a head. Yep. Right. And so that's where that, you learn, you know, you get some punishment, so yep. to speak, you get unwanted consequences. And then once you have those unwanted consequences, you can either, I mean, your life will change, right? Either you're going to be fighting a lot or you're going to be changing your behavior. Yep. Right? Yep. Hey, we got to get to what we should do the stuff. voicemail first. Yeah. I got it right here. I okay. know we've been talking about dog training too long. Let's talk. All about right. One else. voicemail. No, this is all dog training. One voicemail that I am going to share with you is right here. <clears throat> this is from a lady. It's seven minutes long. Sorry. I forget your name. We cannot play this whole Search of the tea, voice I think. message. Trisha, Trish. All right. Here we go. Ready for it, people? I think they're ready. Hi, this is Trisha. And Trisha, I'm just calling Trisha. regarding the latest podcast. Um, I heard Yay. what uh, Eric said as an oldest millennial. I'm I'm like him. I'm in the same age group. And I just wanted to say that, like, the older generations, you think they'd have a better handle on correcting their dogs and their dog's behavior. But in my experience, um, I'd say it's a pretty mixed bag. I think it comes down to personality and not age group because my father-in-law has, like, Ooh. large dogs that he never corrects their behavior on. And he's Shots okay. fired. Trisha uh father-in-law stuff so here's trisha's situation i listened to it father-in-law brought her kids over dogs launch at the kids terribly trained dogs not i don't think super aggressively but like jumping like dangerously the father-in-law puts the dog in the crate the dog freaks out in the crate the father-in-law just let the dog lets the dogs out trisha and her husband don't want to go over to the father-in-law's house father-in-law doesn't want to put the dogs away. Then she told a story about going to the neighbor's house, a little yappy dog in the background while they're talking, yapping the whole time, both older folks, father-in-law and lady. Her experience is it's mixed bag. Older does not necessarily mean better well-behaved. <clears throat> I agree. This is percentages wise. I will tell you from many thousands of clients, some people won't like this. Not every old man is a good dog trainer. This lady's father-in-law, it's not not even a good dog trainer. It's just, I would question what's going on. I'm going to tell you a story. Societally after I do this. or no? Just, well, what's up with him not caring about his grandkids? Like, it's the weirdest thing in the world. The father-in-law is pushing back. He's like, well, you guys can't come over if my dogs can't be out. Like, which is insane, right? Yeah. There's a lot going on here. Priority issue. Okay. <clears throat> Quick story. Our daughter was two years old, maybe three years old. My grandmother, who I was very close to before she died, we took my daughter to go visit my grandmother. I only saw my grandmother once or twice, once a year at most. She never met my granddaughter. We go out to her house. She had rescued a dog. Dog jumps on my granddaughter. I was like suspect when we went in and I looked on at the dog. Daughter. On my daughter. Yes. I was suspect just seeing that dog. Oh, we rescued this dog. And I'm like, oh, this sucks. I hadn't seen my grandmother in a long time. So I'm like, okay, we got to watch this. Told Liz, like, we got to watch this situation. Well, sure enough, the dog jumps on my grand, my daughter. And I didn't like it at all. It was, there was something to the jump. Plus it's a rescue. My yeah. grandmother doesn't know what's up with the dog. Nobody with a rescue truly knows what's up with the dog in the first year. Okay. You have to see all the triggers. I go, grandma, I love you. I love you. We got to go. Yeah. Later. Peace out. She was like, we were supposed to spend the night, dude. Yeah. It it was, it crushed her. She had nowhere to put the dog. She didn't know crate. She lived in the middle of nowhere. She lived in like the woods. Right. So we couldn't, there was nothing to do. These people don't put their dogs outside anymore. My, yeah. We couldn't put this dog out. It would run away. There was nothing to do. Well, we had to leave. Thing. We had to leave. I didn't see her again, but well, I saw her again before she died. My point is that's the choice she's making and she's making the right choice this trisha she basically does not go over there anymore if she has to go you got to keep your kids safe the second the second point is that i want to make is old men are the best trainers there are i know it's not a 
playing with broad, with broad brush. I I've learned more from my old man clients, my over, I'm almost 50, so I can't say 50 over my, my over 60 year old man clients. I've learned actually something from them. Yeah. I don't learn a lot from clients to be honest with you. you. Know the old, the old <laughs> adage that says, uh, experience isn't the best teacher. It's the only teacher. Oh, that's, that's kind of true. That's a good one, huh? I, d- I haven't learned a lot from, um, my 21 year old clients. I've learned stuff from old man clients and the older lady, I did a video and people commented on how much they liked it. I go, Oh, to the dog, I go, Oh, that's your mommy. And the mm-hmm. lady looks at me and she goes, I'm not his mommy. I'm his owner. And I go, Touche. Yeah. <laughs> and you've been watching like, the videos, yeah, right? I was like the weak one. And she's yeah. like, she's like, put me in my place. Like, it no, was funny because I laughed. We're but, not messing around with this dog. Yeah. Right? She's like, don't call it my, my, you know, me or his mommy or something. Yeah. Listen, the lady's right. Her experience is that the that time doesn't, but I will tell you after thousands of clients, um, generally the older ones are better than the younger ones. What, what is weird to me though, too, is, and I think people, you know, as some, someone in their forties life advice I could give to some of the younger folks is yeah, I hear all this issues of people. Oh, my mom's doing this. My brother's doing this. And we're talking people that are grown, right? They're adults, yeah. um, who have families and stuff. And I always like, talk, I go like, who cares what the, who cares what your sister is doing? Mm. Like, like, just don't talk to her about that. Well, she brings it's like, tell her not to bring it up and be like, just, you know, you don't, ha- if you're, if you're, sister or your brother is ruining your life, right? You don't need to talk to them, right? And you can even you realize mom, how hard this is. I don't care. Even if you're, it's so you're hard. a callous individual. True. True. More callous True. than most. True. Right. You told me a story that maybe I, can, well, you can't share you, that story. I'm not going to share that story, but you told I'll me share a, your story. Okay. You showed, no, no, another, a different story. By oh. your parents getting divorced. Oh, and you're like, yeah, I didn't care. Like you're, you're, you're a, it's pretty crazy for a 12 year old boy not to care. Yeah, it, but you're but more the callous story, than But most. the story, the, the reason behind oh, that they though, fought. is if you have a, right. people screaming in the house all day, all right. then all right. when you go to a place and there's no screaming and your dad's happy and your mom's happy, you're like, yeah, this is really not that bad. You realize how hard it is to sell some individuals don't talk to your sister. I don't care. Well, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, I'm not saying if you want to live a miserable life, then go ahead. No, you're right. But if, but even with someone's but you're mom, you. but even with someone's mom, your see, brain have, is not there. Brain. I have great relationship with my mom, great relationship with my dad, with yeah. my kids, with my wife, with my uncles and aunts, but even with uncles and aunts, right? As you start to have Christmas in, in different, you know, Thanksgiving parties and stuff like that, there's this pull away because the, we all had the same kind of grandparents, right? So then it's, people start bunching off into their own mm. family. They don't want to meet with the same group and stuff. And so it's like, there'll be these like infighting over, well, he doesn't want to go to this. And he does. I'm like, who cares who wants to go? Yeah, you if they want to go, they want to go. If they don't want to go. Some people weirdly care. Yeah. I just think you can't I don't get control it, other people. So you need no, to. No, you can't. And like I talked about my little hierarchy the other, you know, about four weeks ago about the hierarchy of what is most important to you? Is your family most important? Well, even within family, there's a subset. Kids are, you know, wife and kids usually at the top of that hierarchy. So my, f- my main no, thought right, is right, right, my right, wife right. and my kids. And then from there, it's my parents. Now, right. people beyond that, if they, if someone's like, if my aunt is just like, Hey, I'm, I don't like your dad. I'm not going to talk to him anymore. I'd be like later, you know, I yeah. either wouldn't care or I would just not talk to her either. So, but you have to eventually cut the cancer out when people are trying to interfere with your life. I'm yeah, like you, Dr. Phil today. Yeah, you do. You do. But it's hard for people. They have a different experience growing up. And yeah. Uh, and I wasn't talking about Trisha either. No. I actually not. no, but I, I really wasn't because I, I, no, I didn't hear the were. full video. So I yeah. I'm just saying. Um I but my point was more around go. what you were saying. But what you were saying was about your grandma. Like it's okay to just be like, sorry, we gotta go, bro. Well, we had to. Like we're we gotta go. Like later. I, I know it hurts you, but like your enjoy enjoyment of hanging out with our daughter is not as important as our daughter dogs face. getting bit. No, it's right? not even close, so. it, but it was because, okay. My, my grandmother's enjoyment is 100% going to be over. My daughter's face being bit isn't 100% going to happen, but one is so much more serious than the other. So there's a hierarchy. 
Yeah. So, so then in an odds thing, right? 100% my grandmother is going to be super duper unbelievably sad. 100%. 1% chance my daughter's face is going to be scarred. Unless it's 0. 0.0001, you have to make that decision. Yeah. You have to, right? You constantly That's decision have to make making. Dis you have to make mature decisions. That's and, pros and cons. Yeah. And if you and don't weighing do it. things differently. And I know people who don't weigh pros and cons well, and it's very strange to me. Yeah. You have there to. are these things that there's a 1% chance of them, 100% chance of the other. You still got to do the thing that there's a 1% chance of. Yeah. But there's also things like walking where there's a solid cliff, cliff face on both sides. And you're like, hey, let's go ahead and go out there. And you're like, yeah. 99% of the time we're fine. That's like yeah. 1% like yeah, I'm not going. I just don't go out there. Like it's all right. The reward doesn't match the right. There's also an age right? thing. Like I'm never jumping out of a plane. I can't say I'll never I'm not doing it. It doesn't even excite me. Well, if it has excited me, I would have tried to do it a long time ago. I just yeah. never it's never come up, right? I'm um, not doing it. One thing I want to tell people before I'm not riding go, on a killer whale ever again. One thing I wanted to clarify, I didn't get to say it during our dog segment, but which is basically this whole podcast, but was around when you work with these aggressive dogs, I think people that are watching are like, oh, he's probably so fired up. He's got this really big Connie Corso Sucks. coming in. Yeah. You're not like, oh, this is great. This is a super out of control, reactive monster dog that can bite my arm off. Like, I'm so excited to work with this. You're like, okay, well, this I'm is what I get about, paid for. I'm worried about the other dogs. I'm worried about myself. I'm worried about your employees, if I get injured, the employees. I'm worried about the client. I get into such Stressful. a mode. My my trainers will be watching me do what I'm doing in the middle of aggressive thing. And there's a dog barking and I'm telling the employee, close that door. My employee has one thing to do. Yeah, I know. Close that door. Yeah. And I'm in the middle of, because my, my, my senses are so heightened that I'm aware of where every dog is, where every client is and where every employee is. I'm even aware of that door needing to be closed in the middle of doing this thing with the dog. The, my employee, who they're awesome, by the way, and I, I understand where they are. They're watching. My 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 senses are at a different level. Mm -hmm. And so I go close that door because we don't want to hear the dog barking just for the video. Yeah, you're, and I lose nothing on what I'm doing with the dog even. Yeah. And no, that's that's cool. But I don't know. No, that's that's true. And then the one thing I would say just from like a mastery perspective of your in the mix training these dogs for any. And I know you wouldn't want me to share this like in a video, but a podcast, we can say whatever we want, but the, the malice video with, which is the, the Rottweiler. Rottweiler going yeah. against Prince and the yeah. kind of beef that was going on yeah. with them. So for, if you're bored this weekend, take a look at that video and get to the Type part in Rottweiler to the search bar. Yeah. But or it, it might even come in up with malice, it but other ways it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't sometimes it's not, sometimes it does. I don't know what the oh. deal is. Um, but it, whatever it is, it's called malice. It's red and black and it's, it shows the Rottweiler or whatever. And Prince. And they're going at it. And, um, and it's about six months, four to six months ago, probably when we put that one out. But anyways, if you go to that video and you go to whatever the little spike is where, um, the dog kind of goes at Prince There's or multiple whatever spikes, but yeah. And he goes at you <laughs> slow that down and oh, watch, yeah. watch the way you move out of that. You can see that in my last video. You do that again? I have that clip. I pulled that clip out. That malice video has a five second thing in my last video about I must not four minutes the final in. One then. Yeah, I added the clip about four minutes in, oh. and it's the exact part he's talking about where the dog flips and I move and then I you move moved the your leash. hand, didn't you? Then he takes his mouth and he just barely goes up to my hand and then I flip it. It's it's pretty and wild, you move actually. It, though. It's I think wild. we didn't want to draw a ton of attention to the fact that dog was trying to come at you a bit. He wasn't necessarily coming at me, but, but his it hand, doesn't mean you don't move your hand away. It doesn't hand. mean you don't move your hand away. Yeah. But, it, but it, I just think if you are a up and coming dog trainer and you love doing this stuff, if you watch that video and you watch the way you moved out of the way, it was like you, you were That's unconsciously competent. Yes. You yes, just, yes. You knew where to move. And I think that gets back to that point of the, the correction yeah. when the, the customer doesn't know how to correct. Whereas like you do it enough times and you're just, you're gone. Yeah. It's like the boxer who has already done a little turn before. Yeah, boxing is a good analogy. You know? Hey, so I gotta go. go. I gotta go. All right. You gotta, I you hate to, I to hate to. Dinner, dude. Yeah. Hey, love you guys. All right. Next That's time. It.